Well, I'm sure that you can think of many business cases where a structured workflow would be helpful. Uh, JD Edwards has always provided some standard workflow for us. Um, I think Jeff mentioned them in his presentation earlier. I'm thinking of the purchase order approval workflow, for example. It's been around forever in JD Edwards. More recently, Oracle has provided two new approval workflows, one for voucher approval and one to approve bank account details. We have also been able to develop our own workflows in JD Edwards. However, in the past, workflows needed to be created on the fact client using um, usually by a developer. Also, we'd have needed a developer to trigger the workflow in the appropriate place. Well, JD Edwards has come a long way since then, as you all know. Now we can develop and trigger the workflow on the web. No need for a fact client at all. There is still a little technical-ish work required, but it's minimal. Let's have a look and see, take a look and see how it works. Let's consider the case of intercompany invoicing. Perhaps you have two companies. Let's call them company A and company B. Um, company A raises an invoice. Here we go. Company A needs to invoice company B, for example, for management fees. So the accounts receivable department raises the invoice in company A. They then pass the um, paperwork to a manager who approves the paperwork and passes it on to the accounts payable department who raise an AP voucher in company B. Now, I know this is very simplistic and there are a lot more steps to intercompany invoicing, but let's say, for argument's sake, that this is the whole process. Now, there are many issues that can arise from this simple process already. For example, the paperwork may get displaced. So the invoice is not approved and the voucher is not created. Now the intercompanies don't reconcile. Or the voucher is entered, but it's entered into the wrong company or for the wrong amount, for example. Again, we've got reconciliation issues. So let's look at building a workflow to alleviate some of these issues. This diagram represents the basic flow for, an in, for the intercompany um, invoicing. First, the invoice is entered. Then the invoice information is sent to a workflow and the workflow is triggered. Then a message is sent to the approver requesting approval. If the approver approves the invoice, then the invoice status is changed to approve, the corresponding voucher is created, and any interested parties are notified that the voucher has been created. If the approver rejects the invoice, the invoice status is changed, um, maybe to rejected, and the originator is then notified so it can be corrected. So let's take a look at setting up this particular workflow within JD Edwards. There are various components that we need. First of all, we need a few data structures. Now, this is where you might need a little technical help. The data structures are where we define the information needed for the workflow. We need in a workflow typically two data structures, a key data structure, which is what makes the workflow instance unique, similar to a unique key on a table. And then we need an additional data structure, which holds all the other information you might need in the workflow process. Let's take a look in JD Edwards and see what they look like. You should be able to see my JD Edwards screen now. Okay, so I'm going in to go into object management workbench. Um, I use the, the workbench to build my data structures. So I'm in the web here, and I've built these two data structures in the workbench. The first one is the, um, the key data structure that I mentioned. And if we take a look at it, we can see that what's going through effectively is the key to an invoice. 
And the second data structure is the um, additional data. And that it, additional data is all the information that I will need within my workflow. For example, if I'm going to create a voucher in my workflow, I'm going to need the amount for the voucher. I'm probably going to need a remark. Maybe I need a status to pass backwards and forwards so that it gets updated as it works through the, the workflow process, names, etc. So that's all in the additional data structure. Okay, the next thing that we'll need in our um, workflow is we will need uh, messages. But before I go on to that, let me just explain. So you can build the data structures on the web now. So you don't need a fat client for that. You don't need a fat client either to build the package, but oh, the data structures do still need a package build. So they need to be package built and, and deployed. So that's where you might need to enlist um, the help of IT. Okay. The next thing, we need to set up um, the messages. So for example, we need a message that's going to, to be sent to the approver to indicate that the, um, to indicate that the, that he needs to approve this invoice. And basically, we set up the message in the data dictionary, and you can set it up in the data dictionary, or you can again use Object Management Workbench, the, the, the web OMW, to set, up the, um, to set up the message. Okay, so I've set up this message, and it says the following intercompany invoice requires your approval. And then I've got these um, little fields with these ampersands next to them, numbers with the ampersands. Those represent uh, variables. So when we get to the workflow, we will pass information through to each of these that you will see when we get into the workflow in a little while. So we've got the data structure. So that's the information we need to, to work through the workflow. We've got the messages. That, that is what we're going to be sending out so that we can communicate from the workflow. And the next thing we're likely to need is some orchestrations because we actually need something to do the work. So I have set up two orchestrations here. One is to add a um, the invoice and to add the voucher at least and to set the invoice to an approved status once it's been approved. And the other one is to reject an invoice, to mark the invoice as rejected if the approver rejects the invoice. So let's have a look at the first one. This is the one to actually create the voucher. And we'll see it, it's a very simple one. It has two steps in it. The first one is a form request that creates the voucher. And um, this form request, I used the process recorder to record entering a voucher. And then, of course, I just included that in this orchestration. And then we have a logic extension, a very simple logic extension that updates the pay status. If I take a look at the what's going into it, I'll see that it's sending through a pay status of A over here, plus the key to the invoice. And if I go and take a look at the logic extension, I can see that there's, there's one step in it, and that is to update the invoice with the pay status that I've sent through. So that's the, creates the, the, this orchestration creates the voucher on the accounts payable side and sets the invoice to an approved status. The other one is the reject if, if the invoice is rejected, and all that does is that very same logic extension is called, but in this case, it's called with a pay status of X. So that is basically the reject status that we've set up. Okay, the last thing that we're going to need is we're going to need, or in this um, workflow, is a notification. And what we wanna do is we wanna set up a notification to send a, 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 to notify any interested parties that an intercompany voucher has been created. 
And this very simply, we've set up a message and there are various variables. These indicate the variables with the dollar sign and the curly brackets that we are passing through to this notification to let people know that this um, intercompany voucher has been created. We've also attached to this notification an application link back to the voucher entry screen so that whoever has subscribed to this notification knows there's an intercompany voucher being created and can click on the notification and go and see, uh, you know, take a look at it before they um, post it, for example. So we've got all our components. Let's put it all together in the workflow. So in the workflow, this is the workflow that I've created called WF Intercompany Approval. And we've, it has got various steps. The first step when it triggers off is to send what is called an action message okay, to, the, to the approver to approve this, um, this invoice, this voucher. Oh, wait, before we get into this, let me show you that the first thing we did when I did when I set up this workflow is I told it which data structures I want to use. So these are the two data, that this is the key data structure that I created. And you can see here in coming in is the key for the invoice, for example. And this is the additional data structure that I created. So this is all the other data that I'm going to use within my workflow. Okay, let's go back to the workflow now. So on this action message for approval, if I take a bit of a, 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 a deeper look at that, I'll see that it's sending the message to an address book and that address book number that it's sending it to is whoever I've defined as the approver. And usually, oh, I'll come back to that in a bit. And then down at the bottom here, you'll see that I've, I've mapped the message that I created. Remember, I showed you the, um, the message for the, to be sent to the approver. I've mapped that into here. And here, here's all the detail on that, as we saw it defined. And here are all the variables it's wanting, okay? And across on this side, what I've done is I've mapped each variable I've mapped the data to it that's coming from those data structures that I have defined earlier. Okay. Also, because this one requires, this particular action message requires an approver, it requires the approver to do something, it requires it to act, him to actually approve or reject the, um, the invoice, we need to have a link to the approval um, application and P98806 is a standard approval application that Oracle provide in JD Edwards that we can use for this purpose. So now we've got that approval message. If the approver approves the message, then this is the path that, that the workflow will take. If the approver rejects the message, then this is the path that the workflow will take. So if he approves the message, the first thing that we're going to do is call this orchestration, which is the one that creates the intercompany voucher. And you'll see that we're mapping all the details through from our data structures through into this intercompany voucher here. The next thing that we're going to do is um, send a message to the originator to say that this um, that this invoice has been approved and a voucher has been created. And the last thing, if it's been approved, that we're going to do is call that notification and or trigger the notification so that any interested party who subscribed to the notification can see that the voucher has been created. If the approver happens to reject the invoice, then 
we call the other orchestration, the one that projects the, the intercompany invoice that marks the invoice with an X. And again, we send a message to the originator to say that the um, invoice has been rejected and that these need to do something about it. So we've got all the elements within the orchestration, the data structures, the messages, the orchestrations, the notifications, and we've got the um, workflow all nicely set up. But what we haven't got is we haven't triggered it yet. We, it's not, it's, it just happens to be there. So to trigger it, what, we, what I've done is created a logic extension, another logic extension, and this one, is this int company invoice logic extension. And what this does is it expects coming in a batch number. And then it what it does is it sets various variables and then it selects all the invoices in that batch and it iterates through them. So for each invoice in the batch, it looks at it and says, is this an intercompany invoice? If it is an intercompany invoice, then we are going to go and get some information from the address book. It basically, we're going to find the originator. We are going to set the pay status on the invoice to a Y, which says that there's a workflow in process so that it's not open for to be paid yet. It hasn't yet been approved. We're then going to fetch various information from the, uh, well, we fetch some other information, but we We've also fetched the information from the um, invoice itself, and we trigger the intercompany workflow. And this is where we are passing all that information into the data structures. So from the invoice, from anywhere else that we've got information into the data structures so that they can be used in the workflow. Okay, and then it goes down and it reads the next invoice in this batch and works its way through each invoice in the batch. So we've now got a logic extension that will trigger the intercompany um, workflow if the, this is, is identified as an intercompany invoice. And what we've done with that logic extension is on the speed invoice entry, we went into I went into form extensions and I use this associate orchestration over here to associate not an orchestration but a logic extension. That logic extension in particular, the one that triggers the workflow. And I've associated that with the cancel button. In other words, when I close out of this speed invoice entry screen, when the button is clicked. So when the cancel button is clicked, this, office, this logic extension will be triggered and we will also pass through to it the batch number from up here, which is the batch number that this particular um, invoice entry um, instance used. Let's now go and see it all in operation. So here I am on the invoice entry screen. Let's enter an invoice. And this happens to be an intercompany invoice because customer 50 is an intercompany customer. Okay. So I'll enter some amount. We'll pick up today's date as the invoice date. We'll pick up today's date as the GL date. We'll put in a remark say management fees, and we assign it to a specific account number. And then we click OK. See this batch 8843, and the invoice number that it's created is 3406. Obviously, you can go and create more invoices. I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. What I'm going to do is hit this cancel button. And when I hit this cancel button, that logic extension that is going to fire off the workflow is going to run. So that now runs and checks to see whether the invoices that I've entered in that batch are intercompany invoices or not. If they are, which this one was, 
it's changed the pay status to one on that invoice. It has also triggered the workflow, which, oh, at this point, I'd better just tell you that for the purpose of this demonstration, I am the originator, I'm the approver, I'm the AR clock, I'm the AP clock, I am everybody. Of course, in the real world, there'd be multiple people involved, but um, for the purpose of this demonstration, I've just made myself everybody so that I don't have to swap in and out of the um, of JD Edwards all the time. The other thing that I've done is I have um, I've not enabled that I get emails. So I've disabled the emails so that all my messages will come through to my work center. And that's just for convenience sake, obviously in your, um, for demonstration purposes, obviously in your environment, you would um, be sending an email out to the approver and the approver would then click on the link. But the message that he would get would be exactly the same as the one that I'm getting here, which is intercompany invoice approval. And if I click on that message, I see that it says the following intercompany invoice requires your approval, invoice number 3406, invoice to you there, remarks, et cetera, et cetera. And you can add as little or as much information as you want into your message. And if I click on this link here or that link there, it will take me to exactly the same place. And it takes me to that standard workflow approval screen where I can accept or reject the invoice. In this case, I'm going to accept the invoice. And it merrily goes off and behind the scenes and the workflow is again triggered. Now, as I said, I'm everybody. So if you remember the workflow, the next step would have been to create the, um, the voucher, if I've accepted, and to update the invoice. So if I take a look, first of all, at that invoice, I see that the pay status is now changed to A because this invoice was approved. I will also see that if I looked at the supplier ledger inquiry, I will see that that invoice now exists. Okay. And if I move across, I will see that the invoice number here is 3406 from my original invoice on in accounts receivable. So it's created both of those. But the other thing that I asked it to do was I asked it to please send a notification. And if I look again in my message center, I can check notifications here or I can check the notifications up here. Doesn't matter which way, it's exactly the same notification will come through. But if I click on the notifications and I click on intercompany voucher, I can see here that the message again has come through, the following voucher has been created, that's the document number, there's the amount, etc. please review it. And here is the link that I've supplied. And if I click on that link, it takes me again directly to that voucher where I can review it before I post it. So there's also, because I am also the originator, there was also another message that came through saying that the intercompany invoice has been created. So it says the following intercompany invoice was approved and the corresponding voucher created. Sorry, my spelling mistake, <laughs> but it should say voucher, of course, um, has been created. And it gives you the details, not only of the intercompany invoice, but also the voucher that it created um, as well. So similarly, if we entered an invoice and rejected it, when we looked in the customer ledger inquiry, we would have found an X over there and we would not have found any entry in the, um, in the accounts payable side because our workflow was set up like that. Now, although this workflow process all happened behind the scenes, there's an audit trail of what happened. Um, I think uh, both Jeff and, and um, uh, AJ um, mentioned this. It isn't perhaps the, the prettiest yet. I know that they are doing some work on it, but 
all the information you need is here. So if I take a look, for example, here are, uh, this is the unique key coming from the key data structure over there. So that's what's making this workflow unique. And here's our 3406 down at the bottom. And I can check in here everything that's happened. I can see that it started. I can see that it was approved. And there's the status of approved there. And if I drill down, I can see who approved it over here. I can see that the voucher was created and that that step got completed. I can see that there's an approval message in here that's, um, that I haven't actually even opened yet. I can see that um, the notification was sent and then I can see that the, um, that the workflow ended. So all the information that we need for the workflow to monitor how the workflow is going is here. If I were to just for argument's sake enter another invoice quickly, let me enter one. It does not take me a moment. And again, it's going to, and when I click the cancel, it's going to uh, trigger the logic extension, which would trigger the workflow and if i now take a look in here i see that there's a workflow that's active here so i can monitor which workflows are active using the status up here and i can see what step it's at and who who we're waiting for it's waiting for me to do something on this approval step so everything that has happened behind the scenes is documented and logged here in the process monitor. So you've still got full visibility of what happened there. Okay, so I've shown here a very simple workflow, but you can build a more complex one, including additional steps. Perhaps you also want this workflow to make the automatically make the payment, the intercompany payment, and automatically do the receipting. You can have those steps added in if you wanted to. Um, you can also have, I've only used one approver. You can have multiple approvers. You can have many tasks, whatever you need in there. You can have time delays if you wanted in there. You can have escalations included. And you can also do delegations through workflows. So pretty powerful stuff. And I know it's quite a lot to take in, but it actually... Um, it, the setup is, is it, once you get the hang of it, it's very, it's quite straightforward. Oh, another thing to note is although the workflows within Orchestrator Studio, they've been around for quite a while now. Um, yeah, quite a few releases ago, workflows came into Orchestrator Studio. But some of the features that I've used here actually are only available when you go to release 23. Okay, well, that's it then. Thank you very much. And back to you, Kalpish. Thank you.